about angels. You might know a great deal about movie stars or what television programs are the most popular in this area. But there is a good probability that you do not know much about angels. And children, this chapel is filled with angels. Are there four children in your family and a mother and a father? Then that means in your house, there are six angels and one more, the angel of your family. So that if your name is Brown, your mother has an angel, your father has an angel, the three children have an angel and you have. And that makes up your family and there is an angel for the Brown family. Seven angels in the home. Do you talk to your angel? Why, you don't even think of the angel, do you, children? For the angel's children that are in your home are not only good, they're also bad. There is not an angel standing in front of your door with a flaming sword keeping the bad angels out. The bad angels come in too. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about this evening, children, the angels who are going to help you to hell, called demons, or the angels who are going to help you to heaven, called the good angels or your guardian angel. A long time ago, children, I was talking to a First Communion class. It was in the afternoon. And one of the boys in the First Communion class was told by his mother, when school was over, I want you to bring your little brother to that First Communion class because he's not coming home alone. I don't want you to let him come home alone. Take him to the First Communion class. He did. And I talked to the children about angels. And the children listened, and some of the children did not know much about angels and had not heard about them. And other children knew a little bit about angels, but this little boy, five years old, had never heard about angels, except that his mother was always talking about angels to the older children, but she had not told him much. She just knew angels exist. And I told them that the angels protect all children. And they not only protect your soul, but they protect you from injury. Many times you would fall down and uh, you get your balance and say, oops, I almost fell. The angels keep us from falling. But sometimes they let us fall, children. They let us cut our hands and feet because we learn by our mistakes. But if we are going to be seriously injured many times, we are saved by angels. Your father is driving the automobile many times. He says, boy, that was a close call. No, it was the angel protecting everybody in the car. The angels never leave us alone, the good angels. But the bad ones never leave us alone, children, either. So I told the children how the angels protect. And I said, now, boys and girls, you should talk to your angel every day and say your prayer to the angel every day. And when you're in school and you need help, you should say, angel, help me. And if you're with bad companions and you are afraid, say, angel, get me out of here. And so I told the children for a long time about angels. And that evening, the little boy, five years old, went home and his mother and father took him out to a restaurant because it was his birthday. And he was only five years old, and his big brothers and sisters were talking and enjoying the meal. And his mother and father were, were talking and enjoying the meal. And the little boy, five years old, was bored, and he left to go to the bathroom. And he returned, children, a little while later, and left to go to the bathroom. He just wanted to walk around. And he walked around the restaurant, and he went into the bathroom, and a very strange man, a very frightening man, grabbed that little boy. And the little boy screamed at the top of his lungs and no sound came out. He was so frightened he could not make noise, but he did scream, but there was no sound. It was silent. And uh, immediately, the orchestra leader, because it was a very nice restaurant, the orchestra leader came in and saved that little boy from terrible harm from that madman. And the police came and arrested that terrible man. And the mother was crying, and his big brothers and sisters were all upset. And the father talked to the boy, and the family sat in one corner of the restaurant away from everybody else. And he said, why didn't you cry for help? And the boy said, I did. 
And the father said, how come no one heard you? Didn't you scream? And the boy said, I did. And he said, someone would have heard you if you screamed. And the boy said, I screamed at the top of my lungs, but no sound came out. And the father was very upset. And he didn't want the boy to remember any of this, so he kept talking to him. And he says, well, what did you say when you screamed? Did you say, Daddy? Or did you say, Mommy? Or did you say, Help? What did you say? And the boy said, I screamed, Angel, get me out of here. And that's when the man came through the door. Now, people that don't believe in God, children, or people who have lived in the world and have become very sour say, Oh, that was a coincidence. No, it wasn't, children. That's exactly what angels do. They get us out of here whenever we're in trouble. And they get out of here all of the demons that come in if we ask them. Now, children in the world, there are two kinds of angels, good and bad. The good angels make good girls and good boys. And the bad angels make bad boys and bad girls. And good boys and good girls make a bad world or a good world. And children, you live in a bad world, a bad world for children. That means that older people than you, for a very long time, have been working with very bad angels to make a very bad world. And in the very bad world that you good children live in, your good angels are having a hard time to teach you to be good and to keep you good. And you are not very much longer, children, going to be good. You're going to be bad. You're going to be sinful. You're going to be evil. You're going to live in mortal sin every week and every month. Unless, children, you let the guardian angel that God gave you protect you. You must let him protect you. You can keep him away by ignoring him never speaking to him and never considering that he might help you. And by always listening to the, tev to the temptations that the devil gives. And the temptations that the devil gives come every single day. And those are the temptations to cheat. And those are the temptations to tell lies. Those are the temptations to be disrespectful to your own mother and to your own father. Those are the temptations, children, to think dirty or speak dirty. Those are the temptations, children, to be like other kids, even when you know they're wrong, even when you know they're bad, even when you know they live sinfully. Now, children, how can you possibly protect yourself without the help of God? And the answer is, you can't. You are not going to protect yourself. You are going to be wounded terribly in your soul, and one day you are going to die spiritually. You're going to commit your first mortal sin. And there may be many mortal sins after that, and someday you will never come back to God. You will stay in mortal sin. If the devil can have his way. Now, that's what he wants, children. He wants to do you harm. Now, I happen to be bigger and stronger than any of the boys here that are in the eighth grade. And there's none of them could wrestle me to the ground, or none of them could knock me out with a punch. That's because I'm older than them, stronger than any of them, and bigger. I can put my arms straight out, and hold my hand in their face, and if they swing their arm, they cannot even hit my face. Because I'm bigger than they are. And I know many tricks, because I'm older than them. And I'm also stronger than them. But children, grown-ups, have brains that are like that. They are so much better than yours, because they're older than you, they have lived longer, they have experience, and they know so much more than you. And compared to your grown-ups, grandmother, grandfather, your aunts and uncles, your big married brothers and sisters, your mother and father, compared to them, you're dumb, and they're smart compared to you. 
because they've lived a long time, children, and they've learned a great deal, children. And so when they tell you what they want you to do for the good of your soul, they are telling you that because they love you. They are telling you that because they know from experience what is good for your soul. And finally, they are telling you that because God commands them to take care of your soul. But children, you are commanded by God to obey them. You are commanded by God to be honest to your mother and father every day of your life and to be honest to everybody else. But to be honest to your mother and father and speak the truth even if you are going to be punished. And they said the world was very bad. And the world is very bad because people are very bad. But people are very bad because very bad angels have a hold on a great many adults. And they're not going to let go. They're going to hold on to them until they drag them right down to hell. Now that's what the devils have planned. Well, children, are they going to succeed? Yes. If the adults want them to. Oh, but who would ever want to go to hell? Oh, many souls, children, want to go to hell. Oh, no, that's not true. But there are many souls who want to do exactly what they want to do, and they don't care about God. And that means if they die like that, they are going to hell. And then they say, oh, I don't want to go to hell, but I'll risk it. I'll take the chance. I don't want to go. God is good. In the end, he'll forgive me. But in the meantime, I'm going to do exactly what I want and as many times as I want, and not even God is going to tell me how to live my life. Where do they get such thoughts? They get them from the devils. Just as your angels are continually getting you out of danger, saving you from danger, so also the devils are continually whispering to you, saying, Don't tell her. You'll get punished if you tell her. Don't tell her. And so your mother continues to question you, and the devil says, It's only a small lie, but don't be punished. Don't be stupid. And because you're afraid of your father, when he says something to you, you say yes, no, thank you. And you leave the room, and then you clench your teeth, and you squeeze your fist, and you look in his direction, and you know he can't see you, and you shake your fist at him, and you say, I hate you very much, and someday I won't obey you. That's the devil that put all of that into your mind. He's never away from your children. He's always telling you, be disrespectful. Don't trust them. Don't listen to them. If they don't know, they won't bother you. That's the devil. But the devil does other things, children. He also says, everybody else is doing it. The devil says, why, everyone else is going. Why should you not go? Now, children, in the world that you live in, which I said is a very bad world, in the world that you live in, you have got to be different from other children. If all of the children in your classroom are going to go to a movie that your mother said is a bad movie, you cannot go. And you cannot say, well, if I sneak in, she won't know it. You will commit a sin of impurity and you will commit a sin of disobedience the moment that you plan to do it. You cannot go with the other children, even though they're all going. You've got to be different. You cannot dress like other children. You have got to be different. To be modest means to dress in such a way that nobody looks at you with sinful thoughts. You have got to be different because God commands it. And now, children, that is the style. Everybody dresses like that. No, you're wrong. There are still brave 
young people who dress just the way God wants children to dress. In the terrible world that you live in, children, you are going to commit mortal sin early in your life unless you let God have his way in your life. And it is not going to be a crazy man that's going to grab you and do you great harm like that little boy in the restaurant. It is going to be a devil that is going to grab you and he's going to do you great harm. Unless you let the good angels protect you. Now, children, in the world, the first man and the first woman to come into this world, the world that God made, in this world, the first man and the first woman to come into existence committed a sin. That was called the original sin. And every single child that was born of Adam and Eve was just like the mother and father of human beings. But the mother was in mortal sin and the father was in mortal sin until God sent them into this world in punishment where there would be tears and death and suffering and they would work long and hard. And all of this because of the one sin that they committed, which was a terrible sin. Because they were not like us. They were perfect. They knew what they were doing. And they listened to the devil and he destroyed them. Well, children, all that they had was a wounded human nature. And that's what they gave their children. And the children were just like the mother and father, wounded. And so was every baby that was born in the world until Jesus Christ gave to his holy church the sacrament of baptism to take away original sin so that your little baby sister at home or your little baby or brother at home until that baby is brought to the baptismal fount is a baby that has sin on its soul. It inherited the sin just like it had inherited its eyes and its human nature and its smile, and its breathing. All of that goes with human nature. And sin goes with human nature. And so those children, until they come to the baptismal font, have sin in their soul, and then they are healed. And the sin is removed. And they're made children of God and heirs to the kingdom of heaven. But children, the weakness of the soul is still there. And you are a girl or a boy that has that weakness in your soul. You have a chance of very early in your life committing many mortal sins and then losing your faith. Or you have a chance very early in life of being a girl or a boy who is going to be a saint. Now, do you understand, children, the angels are never going to leave you alone. The good angels do not wish you to go to hell and they will fight and struggle for you. But the bad angels, oh, they'll take you. They'll grab you by the back of the neck and they won't let go. They'll squeeze so hard with the terrible things that they say that they'll paralyze you. They'll tell you over and over again, you, you, you dare think of God? Why, you have such sins in your soul, how could he forgive you? You are so rotten after all of the times that he has pardoned you. Still you go back to the same sins again. How dare you say prayers? That's the devil paralyzing you with temptations to quit on God. And who is helping the angel? The Blessed Virgin Mary, and God Almighty, the angel that is good. And who is helping the angel that is the demon? The devil. And all of the other legions of angels that fell from the wonderful state of holiness that they were in and perfection down to hell itself. The demons. The demons help each other. And so that if one temptation is not good enough, 
They will give you 22 temptations. If that's not good enough to bring you to sin, then 22 angels that are damned will come and help that one bad angel. And if 22 are not enough, 7,000 will come. The devil, children, wants your soul, and he's going to have it if you let him. You've got to get accustomed, children, to the fact that you are the prize. God wants you. You're his child. He made you. But you can let yourself be kidnapped. And the kidnapper, the demon, will kill you in your soul. He will teach you how to sin and how to quit. Give up asking for God's mercy and pardon. He will teach you in a very short time it's not worth being different from other children. Who else helps the devil? Many of the schools in this country help the devil. Nearly all of the TV programs help the devil. The programs that you watch even in your home. The ones that your mother and father say aren't too bad. In comparison to the bad ones, they aren't too bad. But they're too bad for you. And the books. And the movies. Oh, they help the devil. They teach you sin at a very early age. And they rob you, children, of your happy years as little boys and girls. They take away the happiness of grammar school and they teach you what used to be the sins of just high school students. Oh, no, you already know about impurity and you already know about drugs. You already know about thievery. You know already about cheating. And children, if I had a beautiful rose and could put it in front of an air conditioning unit that was blowing cold air into this chapel, in a very short time the rose would wither in front of your eyes and dry up. And that is, that is what is happening in this bad world. Boys and girls of your age are withering and drying up. You are losing your happy years as young boys and girls. And you're in trouble. And the trouble is that the ice underneath your feet is not cracking. It's beginning to break. You're going to go down. And the shock of going down is going to make it most difficult for you to swim to the surface again. Now here's something I want you to remember. Please remember this. It is very easy for a good girl or a good boy... It is very easy for a good girl or a good boy to become bad unless they have the grace of God. And I want you to remember this. It is very hard for a boy or a girl. It is very hard for a boy or a girl that has become bad to become good again without the grace of God. You understand, children? You can easily be harmed by the devil. Unless the grace of God is there, you are going to be harmed. But with the grace of God, he cannot harm you. With the grace of God, he cannot harm you. With the grace of God. But if you have committed mortal sin, children, then without God's grace you will not come back to goodness. Until you have made your act of contrition and gone to confession, you will not come back. You will get worse. And every single day in school, your companions will be a bad influence on you. In every classroom, there are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve girls and boys who are in mortal sin, or very soon are going to be in it. 
And they are going to do you great harm. And you are at an age, children, where you want to do everything that everybody else is doing and you do not want to be different. Well, children, you must be different. You cannot be like your other friends. When your mother says, I don't want you to go to school with that girl anymore, I don't want you to walk home from school with that boy anymore, you can't say, oh, ma. You've got to obey because she's wiser than you. She's older than you. She's learned the ways of the world. She is your mother and you are commanded by God to obey her. Did you hear that? Commanded children, under pain of sin, you must obey your mother and father. God said it. God gave ten commandments and there's one just for you. There is a commandment and it's just for you. And the commandment is obey your mother and father. No. Do you understand, children? It's not enough to obey. God didn't say obey. He said, honor thy father and mother. He said, honor them. That means that you obey them, and it means you respect them, and it means you trust them, it means you listen to them, and it means that you go to them for help. You talk to them, and you tell them about your companions, and you ask for their advice so that they can teach you how to protect yourself. If you have never been on roller skates, then someone who can roller skate well can teach you. And if you have never driven an automobile, someone who has driven an automobile can teach you. And there are many things that young people do not know how to deal with, and their mothers and fathers know exactly what to do. And if you do not talk to your mother and father about school and about your companions, and if you do not ask them for help and tell them what it is that bothers you, you will learn children the hard way, and the hard way is at the hands of the devil. Children, the prisoners of war have come back now, and they tell us that the enemies were terrible. They caused them terrible suffering. They beat them and caused them terrible pain. And the men say that they were treated like animals were kicked and punched and whipped, and terrible things were done to them, and done many times, and sometimes done day after day. Well, children, men are cruel, and they can be cruel to human beings in a terrible way, but no one in the world is as cruel as one devil. And the devil children are after you. The devils of hell are after you. They are like a pack of wolves. And they are howling for your soul. And they're invisible. And you cannot hear them. And they're running behind you and you do not even know that they are near. And without the guardian angel, they would have destroyed you. But think of how many times the guardian angel has saved you and you never asked him. Think of how many more times he will save your children when you do ask him. The world, children, is bad because numbers of people that are called adults listened to bad angels. And having listened to the bad angels... They turned away from God forever. They even worshipped dogs, the sun, thunderstorms and lightning. They worshipped the tree that was struck by lightning. They worshipped devils. We call this world the world of pagans. When Jesus came into the world, everybody in the world except the people in Israel worshipped devils. Do you understand that, children? They didn't pray to God, they prayed to devils. 
Think of how evil they were. We call them the pagans. And then Jesus changed the world with his church. And now the world is changing from good back to bad. The world is going pagan. And pagan means, children, that you worship something or somebody or anything or anybody except God. Now think of that, children. That's the world that you live in. And a great number of the boys and girls that you know in a few more years will worship the devil and not Jesus Christ, and they will pray to the devil, and they will give him very special sacrifices, children. Who are those that are going to do this? The boys and girls in your own classroom. You have no choice now, children, but to remember the angels. The angels who do not want you watching television because you must be different from the other kids. It is very bad for children. It is bad because of the impurity that it teaches you. It is very bad because of the violence that you get accustomed to. It is very bad, above all, because of the wrong ideas that it puts in your young head. And one of the ideas that it puts in your head is the idea that what my mother and father don't know won't harm them, so you tell them nothing. And another wrong idea is never trust them. Now, children, that is what is taught by the devil over television. It's even taught in the classroom in some bad schools. And it's taught in the books, and it's taught in the newspapers all over this country. And children like you are believing it. And in another two more years, in another four more years, those children who are believing it will not believe in God. And who are they? They're the kids in your own classroom. In a very short time, the cruel devil will do terrible things to those little boys and girls that sit in the same room that you do in school. And you have got to pray, children, to your angel. When you get out of bed in the morning, you've got to talk to your angel, and at the end of the day, you've got to talk to the angel, but during the day, you have got to talk to your angel, children. And you must tell the angel to protect you. You must ask him many times, what should I do? You must say many times, angel, get me out of here. And you must say that, children, with complete confidence that the angel is going to get you out of here. The angel is going to protect you. But remember this, children. He isn't going to do it, maybe, if you went into that place just because you wanted to. The devil saves you many times when you trip. But if you jump off a wall on purpose, Maybe he'll let you fall and hurt yourself. Maybe you will break your ankle or cut your hands and knees. He's going to let you learn a lesson. Children in the world, there are very bad men and there are very good men. And the very good men, very good women, have listened to their angels and have been taught by their angels. And the very bad men have listened to the devils and have been taught by the devils. And the very good men once were almost everywhere. But now their number is going down and going down. And the number of bad men is increasing and increasing. And because they're older than you and wiser than you and stronger than you and richer than you, they know how to use children. And they know how to use you children to destroy the country and to destroy the church. And presently, children, you are being destroyed by movies and by television and by drugs and by bad schools and by bad books and by bad companions because there are devils after you. 
And the only way that you are going to be protected, children, is by obedience to your parents, by honesty with your parents, and by trusting your parents, and by prayer, and by confession, and by Holy Communion. And there is no other way, because that's God's way. God said that nobody can walk on water, and so nobody does. And God says that nobody can walk on air, so that if you jump off the top of the building, you will not be able to walk your way down. Anything that God wants, that's the way it is. And God wants children to obey their parents and to ask their parents for help. Now, you don't have to. But if you do not do that, if you have your way instead of God's way, first of all, you will have sin, and then secondly, you will have tears. Because you will learn the hard way, and who will grab you? It will be the cruel devil. Now, if men can make prisoners of war suffer, just think what a devil can do to a boy or a girl to make that boy or girl suffer. It will be dreadful, children, what he will do to you. And to protect yourself, you have got to leave your parents have their way in bringing you up. And you cannot turn out to be a sneak and a cheat and a liar and think that you're going to be good and think that you're going to grow up and be happy. You're going to grow down and be wretched because devils will pull you down just as people pull down branches from a tree to get the fruit that is on those trees. So the devil will pull you down to get your soul, which is the fruit that he is looking for. Now, children, in the world that is pagan, remember, everybody or anybody is worshipped before God. What is being worshipped today instead of God? Man. Human beings prefer man to God. Human beings prefer the ways of man to God. And so, it will be like this next year when you are older. It will be like this the year after when you are a good bit older. And you will have the temptation to prefer your way to God. Now, God's way is the way to heaven, and your way is the way to down. And you will have much help from bad angels. But if you want to do what God wants you to do, then you will have help from your mother and father, and you will have help from good angels. You will have help from the Blessed Virgin Mary, and you will have help from God. And so you are going to become saints, children. Or you're going to be damned. Did you ever think of that now, as young as you are? Because the world is so rotten, I will have to be different. And because I have to be different and can't be like the other kids, because I can't be like the other kids, then I am going to need God's help, and I am going to have to trust Him to save me because I can't do it myself because the adults are too smart and too strong and too big for me. Children, go to confession every single week. Tell the priest, not just your sins, but tell him what it is that's worrying you. Tell him about a particular temptation. And tell him if you are mixed up and do not know what to do, Tell him if you do not wish to mention something to your mother and father, what it is, and ask him for his help. Get the help of God, children, in confession, and say your prayers, and you will become a saint. But if you do not become a saint, children, you are going to hell. Now that's how bad the world is. You haven't got a chance. 
I'm looking at some small boys here now that might be in the fourth grade or fifth grade or sixth grade. And if I went down and grabbed them by the scruff of their neck and lifted them up in the air, they couldn't break loose. Now that's what the devil has in mind for you. He's waiting for the chance to really get, and get his hands around your soul and he's going to tear you to ribbons. Because he's strong and he's smart and he's cruel. He'll never give you a chance, children. He will teach you mortal sin and he will teach you so well that you won't forget the first lesson. If you commit a sin of impurity, children, in the fifth grade, when you are 50 years old, you will still remember that sin. You won't forget that lesson. That's how good a teacher the devil is. And if you have seen programs on television that have convinced you that you should never tell your mother and father anything. You're not going to forget that, children. You're going to remember that next year. You're going to remember that every time the good angel says, tell your mother and father, they'll help you. You'll remember the lesson you learned on television. Never tell them anything. Now, children, there are grown-ups, very bad grown-ups, who are helping the devils, but the devils don't need any help. But men and women are helping devils. So what can you little kids do against them? You can't do a thing without grace. But with God's help, not all of the demons in hell can harm you. But without that help, you're going to be torn to pieces, children. I talked to boys and girls five years ago about this. I talked to boys and girls about this when you were not born. One of the first talks that I ever gave to boys and girls, I remember the parish that I was in, was in 1960. That was a long time ago. It was the first time that I had an entire day to talk to boys and girls. Do you know that some of those children are dead now? But they were your age. They were killed in automobile accidents or they were killed from drugs. Do you know that some of those boys and girls are burning in hell now, children? That was in 1960 and they're just as old as you. And they were disinterested or they couldn't care less what the priest was saying because the mother made them go or the father says, I'm driving you and don't you dare leave one minute before it's over. Or they didn't want to be there. And some of the children today are very unhappy. They're grown up now and they're married, but they've learned all about sin, children, because it's their sin. And the teacher? Well, the teacher was a good teacher. They never forgot the teacher's lesson. The teacher was the devil. And once he taught them how to sin, they never forgot. The first serious lie they ever told, oh, they have repeated that lie many times since. They have found out that if you are really in trouble, cheat. They've found out if you're really in trouble, don't tell the truth. They've found out if you're really in trouble, blame somebody else. The devil is a very good teacher, children. Once he teaches you one sin, it lasts for a lifetime. You never forget the lesson. And the first dirty conversation that you have, Oh, you won't forget how to talk like that again. Only this time it won't have to be the same person. Next time it can be with many, not just one. And so it is with all of the sins, children. In school you can learn a lesson and forget it in a week. In school you can learn a lesson and next year you can't remember how to do this particular problem. But you never forget what the devil teaches, do you? You always remember it. The first time he taught you how to steal, you could do it again today, couldn't you? You wouldn't need any more lessons. You know just how to do it now without being discovered. Now that's how cruel the devil is. 
He goes after boys and girls who don't know any better because they're too young to know the dangers that they're in. And who are those boys and girls? You, yourself. Not the kid behind you now, not that boy or girl next to you or in front of you. It's you. He is after you. And you will need the Blessed Virgin Mary. You will need your angel. You will need God's grace, or else he's going to get your children. Now, the modern world is the world that you live in, and it's not modern, it's just pagan. And there's nothing new about a pagan world. A pagan world is a bad world, and you are in a bad world, and if you children go into the farmyard and you shovel manure, then you are going to stink too unless you take measures to protect yourself from the stench of sin that is all around you. You see sin with your eyes and hear it with your ears. You think it with your mind and you have the bad companionship of your own classmates and the older children and the bad example of adults. How are you going to grow up and be pleasing to God without grace? You won't. So children, please, try to remember, without grace, you're going to hell. And with grace, you can be a saint and go to heaven. Now you're going one place to the other children, and you might only be 11, or you might be 14 and going on 15, but you're ready now to become a saint. And that's what God wants. And that's why he puts you in the world. He wants you in heaven. And he's going to have you because he knows how to get you there and he's powerful enough to be able to get you there and he loves you enough to want to get you to there and he's merciful enough to forgive you anything to get you there. But you have to let him. You must want what God wants. God wants you very badly in heaven because you are his child. You're a child of God. And you are holy and pleasing to God for so many years of your life. Are you holy and pleasing to God right now? But God gave us the sacrament of penance so that if we're not holy and pleasing, we can become holy and pleasing right away. And he gave us himself in holy communion. And he brought us into his church in the sacrament of baptism. And he's going to do wonders for us every day of our life to save us from the cruelty of the devil if we let him. God wants me. Not the kid next to me or the kid behind me. Not the boy in front of me or the girl next to me. God wants me in heaven. And he can't have me if I have my way. And what's my way? Selfishness. I want to do what I want to do. No, if you want to do what God wants you to do, obey your mother and father. Trust your mother and father. Talk to your mother and father. Say your prayers every day. And each day of your life, ask God, please make me a saint. He will, children, because he wants to. That's why he made you. All right, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Something that you need to be interested in. How much could you write about God? And yet, why are you in the world? And if I'm in the world, if I'm in the world to know God, how is it that I do not know?
And now that I'm in the world and God made me to know Him, how much do I love Him? That's the whole purpose of life. It's not for any other reason except that I might love Him. He put me in this world. Why should I love Him? Because I am a child of God. He did not teach me to pray, our judge, our creator, our savior. I was to pray, our God. What is that? This is what I was to call God. It is the Father in heaven who has given me my existence. Surely, Papa, that I know him. And that I love him, and since I want to love him more, that I serve him. And how do you serve God? You submit to him. What does that mean? You let him teach you. You let him bring you up. You let